What up all my MEPs and welcome back to my channel. This is another uh, setup that I was going to do right before I stopped filming today. Um, I did get a comment on that spoken word video for the Papi Pichong announcement by Jessica. And she was wondering about some of the nuggets that were actually in this piece. So what I was going to do, kind of in the Kendrick Youngblood style, which also just give a shout out to both of these poetry channels that are doing a lot of stuff. Like, please check out Jessica's channel. She's doing this amazing, amazing series with the artist's way and she's a brilliant knockout poet and then Kendrick does awesome reaction videos which is kind of how I took this reaction setup from so shout outs to Kendrick for helping me with how I should do this um, I'm actually gonna go through the whole video um, I don't know if I'm gonna have it in one shot because I talk a lot or I'm gonna cut it into two just so you could kind of see what went into it a little bit of the background of it um, and yeah, let's see if there's anything that you'd be able to learn. There's a lot of heavy, like, Puerto Rican, um, like, information and culture that's in here. Um, so I wanted to make sure I was able to do that. And speaking of Puerto Rican culture, my neighbor is switching from, like, bolero to reggaeton. And I don't know if it's going to pick up or not, but it actually might just be a part of the vibe we're going to catch um, if we decide if, if that music actually picks up or not. So let's get into it. Um, I'm also gonna be doing it from the iPad, so I'm gonna be looking down. I know I have a computer here, right? But I'm gonna be, I have more technology, so I'll be looking at it on the iPad, and I'll be stopping every now and then. To start with this video, I will say this. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and click on the notification bell to get more videos like these, um, and share this with a friend. I love doing things like this, especially this one where it's a bit more unscripted. Uh, this is kind of more laid back, how my classes are, um, except of course in classes, it's more turned on you as a student, um, where I, I give you, you all like tips. Uh, there's a bit of a lecture component, and then we usually do a generative writing assignment. Um, and you'll you'll get ambiances of the house. So like my my rice cooker might start steaming while I'm on this, but we'll just see what happens, right? We're just working. It's it's the end of my filming day, so I just decided to to try it out. Um, what you want to know about this in the beginning is uh, Ray Ruiz is an awesome photographer and an awesome uh, dancer in his own right, a choreographer, and he's from Newark, New Jersey, also. And we actually went to high school together, so we're both Newark made. Uh, both Newark artists like doing our thing and he was the one that filmed this for me by the way this is the same day that I took photo shoot pictures uh, pop in some of my photo shoot photos right there my author photos that I use for uh, my book publishing and things such as that so Papi Pichong which interprets to Father Papi Pigeon Papi Pichong Papi Pichong flies out of my library book and no one understands him because he chirps at Spanish to English dictionary speak. Don't dismiss Papi's beautiful wings, a saber, a grindstone attached to gold-plated breasts, a picture flying across a flag on a wingspan of a flying rat. So this part right here specifically, just talking about the beginning to this part, um, the, the start of this poem actually happened in the North Public Library when I was researching uh, poetry literary figures. So when I say Papi Pichong flies out of my library book, that was actually the first thing I thought of while I was there reading about all this Puerto Rican literature and history. And and I just thought of like this bird flying out of the page to deliver information. And no one understands him because he chirps at Spanish to English dictionary speed. That actually goes to code switching. Um, and the idea of thinking in one language and having to speak in another language, right? Sometimes words are incoming in my mind in sentences in Spanish or English, and then it takes a while, like an extra couple of milliseconds to do that transference. So if you're multilingual, uh, you'd probably feel that. Also, if you speak differently with your parents than you do with like your teachers or, or faculty or strangers, right? That is something that you're also code switching for, right? There, there's that millisecond of a switch that happens. Um. Sing vergüenza, he ruffles its feathers, juts its pecker at an unknown roof, screaming, Mira, 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 I got your stereotypical boricua right here, pointing at its pigeon butt. Okay, there was a lot there. Okay, I actually pulled it up on my phone because there was so much information there that I wanted to make sure that I was getting everything back to back. So first, sing vergüenza is a saying that folks in the community, uh, in the Puerto Rican community specifically would say, and that's saying like, you're without shame. So like, if you do something and you're shameless, like it, it's kind of like a reprimand. They'll be like, sing vergüenza. Cause it's like, you have no shame. You're like a little rude. Um, so fluffs its feather, feathers and juts its pecker. I'm 
supposed to kind of stro stride the line of like a bit of toxic masculinity because we have that phallicness in there. Um, and slurring goes to the beer that happens in the talk, um, uh, closer to the top, excuse me, because, you know, there's a lot of liquor that happens within Latinx communities. Um, so Mira, Mira um, is actually a pool from Pedro Pietri's um, Puerto Rican obituary. Um, so I suggest you all read that part and I'll actually put that piece up right there. And actually, if you, if you go and you find this video of me from Lips Poetry a long time ago, I actually recited the Puerto Rican obituary. It's a very, very long poem. And there's a couple of other times, uh, throughout the course of Papi Pichong, the collection where I, I pay homage or I shout out the Puerto Rican obituary in different ways. Um, so I got your stereotypical Boricua right here. That's actually a, kind of like a nod and a, and a jab to myself. Um, I talk about in that collection a bit of romanticizing the Puerto Rican identity or fetishizing the Puerto Rican identity with myself actually being Puerto Rican. What ends up happening with a lot of folks uh, through travel, once they're in the mainland for a long time, you become very Americanized. So everything about you being a part of your culture, wherever your lineage from, it's kind of a caricature of itself. So um, kind of becoming an adult and becoming a writer and talking about these things, I had to kind of wrestle with what is a caricature of being Puerto Rican? What is a caricature of being Latino or Latinx or Hispanic? And also a caricature of being a poet, right? Because I feel like sometimes as poets, we want to poeticize ourselves and we want to live the life as a poet. We want to put like elbow patches on our arm pads and like travel and, and, and lurk late, um, taking a, a nod from Gwendolyn Brooks, you know, like at bars and stuff like that, which we do all of those things, right? But we're also a multitude of other things. So I also want to make sure that we're calling attention to that too. All right, let's get back into it. If it had a crack, it'd be the fault line where the carpetbaggers meet the campo. The winning lotto ticket my grandfather never scratches flutters out of that same library book and Papi Pichong gobbles it up. Someone mentioned the idea of the pigeon butt. I also wanted there to be some humor in here. Um, I took a mythology and lit course with this really great professor called Rachel Hottis in my MFA. And I'll pop a picture up of her here. She's very uh, famous. And her dad also, which was also like a literary critic and, and a writer. And I think talked about mythology as well or the classics. Um, and they talked about how like mythology exists in our everyday life. And we use things like humor and romance and sex and seriousness and, and laughter and joy and, and personal experiences to draw these linkages between mythology and how we choose to navigate the world. So in a way, mythology is another language in how we speak about ourselves, right? Um, so I wanted to make sure that within the seriousness of the stereotypes, right? Uh, within the seriousness of like uh, poverty and living below poverty lines, which uh, will come up soon, especially with the ideas of the lottery tickets, um, that there's some humor in there too, because, you know, people are funny. We're funny, I'm funny, you're funny. Um, and we like to laugh. So what else is here? Ah, okay. Um, a fault line. So there, there is kind of like a, a fault line that actually runs uh, by or through Puerto Rico, and that's how they've gotten some earthquakes in the past several years. Um, and the campo uh, is just a rough translation for camps, and it's kind of like the country of Puerto Rico, right? Um, so th those are places that don't have that that aren't in the city, so don't have all the 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 first world equipment and the first world access and luxuries that are done in places like San Juan, which is like the capital city. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay. It's been a long time since we've seen real gold and not the deceiving foil of a publisher's clearinghouse sold dream. Publishers Clearinghouse, for some of you that aren't old enough to remember, because I barely remember it, um, are it, it's kind of like that thing where someone comes to your door and knocks on it and says, hey, you're a winner, and they have that really big check, right? And I think Publishers Clearinghouse is also a magazine. 
Um, so th this idea is the idea of like um, some of the viejos, some of the older people are, are, are elders in the community um, and their obsession with things like lottery tickets and hitting that big number, getting that big check. And a lot of those, th those lottery systems you pay into, right? And I actually do have a bit of a commentary on how even the literary community uh, has a bit of that lottery system that we pay into. And that's something I tussle with um, as someone that comes from a, a legacy of people that really invest into lotto tickets and scratch offs and publishers clearing house and things like finger hut and pay order and, and layaway and things like that. Everything that's up, like on credit. Um, and how that kind of manifests itself and how I navigate the world as, you know, someone who would hopefully want to be published at places right and have to pay into things like that so i i, I kind of think about legacy in terms of that too and that's what you all should be thinking about too right um if if it's comfortable enough for you think about how you navigate the world based off how your parents and your family systems and your culture have navigated the world it's been longer since Borinquen was Boricua, since coplas decimas y bombas fetishized Borinquen reinas and creole babies Okay, super, super loaded. Super, super loaded. Okay, so uh, we are at the part of um, Borinquen was Boricua, right? So Boricua is the name for folks of Borinquen uh, or Borinquen, which is the name of Puerto Rico if we're thinking about who, what the Tainos called Puerto Rico, which were the original folks, the the, the, um, the indigenous folk of the Caribbean, the Tainos and then there were the Arawaks uh, as well. Uh, Puerto Rico was actually a word given to uh, Boricuas by the Spaniards and Bo Puerto Rico actually means rich port, right? Because there was a lot of access um, in terms of supplies and um, in terms of plantations, plantations and such. And there was the promise of gold uh, on that place as well, which I allude to. And you see that with the publisher clearinghouse thing too. So I'm talking about the, <clears throat> the diaspora. I'm also talking about like the slave trade and colonization, right? So when we talk about Creole babies, you know, there was a black, there is, there was and is a black population uh, in Puerto Rico, right? A, a lot of of Latinx folk. They look like a lot of different people. Uh, coplas, decimas, y bombas are different kinds of poet poetic forms. The copla and the decima, but it's also music, and that also translates to, to bomba, which is one of the, the national musics of Puerto Rico. Um, and in some other parts, uh, you'll see me talk about Maya West. That's where my grandfather was from and his lineage was from, and that's actually ground zero for a lot of the bomba music of where its inception was and bomba music and plena uh is also very uh very political music right so i think that also naturally feeds in the poetry too and you'll see that's why a lot of other puerto rican poets also mention that too show me royalty father pigeon before you go up in flames before you will not burn to ash buried underneath more history where musicians and poets still sit on your pile of dust because you can still sing louder okay there was there was a bit of a of a nice Harry Potter reference, but also myth of thinking that uh, Father Pigeon or Papi Bichong is gonna manifest itself into a beautiful phoenix like fox and rise through the ashes, right? And, and save us all. Um, so that's where that's from. Fly me back to the age of antiquity where your angels in Ponce harvest coca, making our heartbeats beat faster than our feet stepping to the conga and nort. Okay, so I took the ideas of plantations, I took the ideas of music, and then I brought it back to where I am right now. I'm actually in downtown Newark in that area. Actually, I think that building that is in the back there, and I'll circle it, that's actually where they filmed one of the Batmans uh, for the Dark Knight series. I don't know if it was from the Dark Knight Rises, but they actually used one of those really tall buildings for that. Papi Pichon wants me to follow him past Oscar Lopez Rivera during the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Oscar Lopez Rivera actually has the record for the longest political prisoner ever. And he was actually set free. He was free to walk uh, by Barack Obama. And if you want to know more about Oscar Lopez Rivera, you should actually look him up. Uh, he's actually a really big figure like in their own nationalism. I wanted to say like national liberalism before. That's why that was that weird cut. But no, it was nationalism before Commonwealth, where we squat like Gokis, before colorless, before the Bronx burnings, before our sea of bricks, our sea of earth learned to speak 
Spanish. A Spanish, that little inflection at the end of Spanglish that was throughout the poem. That's not really in the in the actual poem, but I just decided to embellish it on the spot. I tend to do that sometimes. Um, there's also a couple of other things too. Like now we're like just going back into history. We're kind of like flying through space and time here. So there was the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Uh, there was before Commonwealth, right? A lot of people don't know that Puerto Rico is actually a part of the United States. Um, Puerto Rico is a Commonwealth of the United States, which technically means that um, <clears throat> the the U.S. governing uh, society is still basically. Uh, uh, a, a colonizer for Puerto Rico, right? We 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 funnel all of the funds of Puerto Rico and, and and a lot of the other political matters into the jurisdiction of the United States, and they kind of call the shots. So that's why uh, a lot of folks that want independence for Puerto Rico um, really fight hard for it because there is a lot of political rule and political structure that is in place from the states that make it harder for folks on the island of Puerto Rico to do things. I also refer to the Bronx burnings and the Bronx burnings come up um, in a couple of other poems and actually it comes up in every 1st and 15th as a matter of fact uh, with Begao and the ideas of places just burning down for people uh, for, for tax purposes and things such as that. So that links back to the whole idea of carpetbaggers where things get swept under the rug um, in, terms of in terms of financial gain being gained elsewhere. Um, so yeah, that's the poem, that's Papi Pichong, and that is a sample of what is to be expected from the actual collection Papi Pichong that will be coming out from Get Fresh Books in the next about year and a half or two. By the time this video is up, I would probably have um, a, a kind of hard uh, hard and uh, fast date of when that's actually going to come out. I'm sorry I was stuttering a lot, y'all. I just filmed like four or five videos. Um, so as always, again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe hit on that notification bell and share this video with someone else um, in the comments. Let me know if you liked this style of video and I might be able to unpack uh, poems that I like from other folks or maybe even poems that you suggest to me and I could just come up on here real quick, just turn on the camera and do some of that. Um, I will see you all in the next class and leave me even more feedback on top of the other feedback of how you're liking the return so far. Um, I think now when people are gonna send me comments um, and questions, I'm gonna try to turn that into content for you all while I'm creating my other things. So I'll see you all in the next class.